Catch it. No, I just sore, but um, that was expected. You know, it's going to ice it, be fine. Give me five, six days, I'll be all right. What did this all mean to you? You, know, you said you had the choice, they told us you had the choice of coming here, being away, going on somewhere. So you stay here. What did it all mean to be back in here and have this experience? Just wanted to be home. Um, you know, this is something and a place that meant a lot to me. Um, it's a place that I grew up, you know, being a fan my whole entire life. When, you know, I was a kid, used to be sitting in the upper 300 level at Market Square Arena watching, you know, the Pacers play. Um, so um, to, to get the opportunity to come here and play, you know, early in my career and uh, to get the opportunity to come back here and try to hopefully pull off like a Udonis role for many years. Um, in an organization where, you know, it means so much, it will be an honor. So I think that was the biggest thing is staying and come back home and try to, you know, be a part of something that I know it can happen and I've been a part of, like, the good part of it uh, to see it get back there. What stood out to you about the makeup of this team, what they could look like moving forward with the components that you've been with for the last two years? I mean, it's just a great group. It's a fun group to be around. Um, very young, a lot younger than when I was here. Um, but, you know, like core wise and personality wise, it, it was a, it was a fun group to be around. So, you know, I think Ty kind of leads that, uh, when he comes here being very open and fun to be around and, um, still a kid at heart, but, uh, a true leader and seeing how, how Miles have developed into a mature kind of leader. Um, it just blows my mind to see him where he is now and how mature he is now from, you know, when I had him as a rookie. So um, those two guys are the catalyst of our team. And, um, you know, come back here, it, it was very easy to kind of get transitioned in with those two guys on the forefront, like making it, making it easy to talk to. I mean, I would, I would love the opportunity. Like I said, I would love to be kind of like a Udinus, but play if possible or whatever, you know, I can still play a little bit. I'm not saying you Donis can't, but um, I think I still have a little left in, a little gas left in the tank um, a little bit if, if need be. But um, to pull off like a Udonis type role uh, for many years now and then try to be that guy who played the most years in the league um, with my hometown team, I think will be an honor. It'd be something that's awesome. But you know, that's that's not in my control, so. You were here the first time, defense was everything, right? What needs to change here to maybe get back a little bit towards that, that end of the spectrum where defense matter? No, that's not. I just, I'm just a player. Uh, I'm not in the coaching side yet. Uh, but, you know, I think no matter what, defense in, in any team should be, you know, a priority. Um, no matter if we're scoring, you know, 130 points like we do for a season, um, if somebody's scoring 135, you're, you're losing most of those games. So um, still having it as a priority, but knowing what our identity is, and that's, you know, get the ball up the court and play fast. But um, I think we're good enough and have a group of guys who can do both. Um, and, and it starts from training camp of setting that mindset and knowing who our identity is. Um, we want to play fast, but we also want to be physical and we want to defend. I don't even know what happened to Dallas, to be honest. What happened? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of like tanking. I think that's something that that's the switch that you can't turn on and off. You know, it's once you kind of coach yourself as a tanker, it takes years to bounce back. You know, we've seen it so far with a lot of teams around this league. So 
Um, I'm a big thing of like, is it smart in certain situations? Yes, but um, I'm a big believer of you go out there and you play, you play to win always. And the team is better than us and they're better than us. But um, we want to, you know, work on our championship habits and our mindset of, you know, it means something when you put this Indiana on the front of your jersey and, you know, we play a certain type of ball and, you know, we're, we're, we're about winning. I mean, I think I did well with, you know, the, the opportunity that I've gotten when, you know, the opportunity was to play a long enough time where you can kind of get loose and things like that. But, um, you know, I can be out there with pretty much any group. Um, I've never been, you know, a dominant type of guy on ball. I was more of like, you know, a utility person, do whatever the team asks if it needs me to be in the corner, if it needs me to defend, if it needs me to score. Um, so, you know, whatever opportunity or option they need me to do, um, I think I can fill that option. So um, I'm going to still work this summer and come back as a better player and, you know, just try to do the best I can. I mean, I think he's like he's matured as far as not just his age, but his maturity on the court um, in the locker room. You know, Miles used to be a very quiet guy, um, and now you know he he speaks. He speaks up when things is on his mind. He speaks up when things are not going well or when things are going good. Um, that wasn't Miles when I first got him as a rookie. You know, he was very timid, very quiet, um, laid back type of guy, but. He's turned into a great leader for us, and I'm happy to see his success, and I think, you know, it's paid off for him. When you were here the first time, do you think if I'd have asked you then that you wanted to have eventually a Haslam-type role, a veteran that was a mentor, do you think you would have thought you would have wanted that? I don't know. You know, I was a city kid, come from Indianapolis on 34th Street. I, I don't know how many years I was going to be here, you know, let alone not just one, but to, you know, be finishing 15 now, um, you know, it's, it's been a blessing. So uh, probably not. I never thought I would get past a rookie deal, you know, coming from where I came from here. You know, you don't see it often where guys are successful. Um, you know, the first person that really gave us the opportunity when I was a kid was Jermaine O'Neal. Um, you know, you used to have this city-county game here where we used to play here um, at Conseco at the time. Uh, so, you know, you, you never knew that you were going to be, you know, in that position. But as as now, I think it's, it's fun. You know, if I can get to that 21-year-old, that 21-year mark um, with this blue and gold on my chest, uh, I think the end of my, my books and chapters will be a hell of a story. You feel like, was there a time, though, where you changed that mindset where you weren't just a player but you tried to be a leader and a mentor at any point in the last few years? I mean, just the, the last couple of years, I think the bubble year kind of like opened my eyes that it's a lot of things bigger than basketball sometimes. Um, and, and sitting back and looking who, are, who I am as a person, as a player, and what I can bring to the table, but at the same time of sometimes knowing what what your your roadmap is going to be. And I think a lot of my roadmap came from, like, you know, seeing guys that are in kind of my position and how well they're doing it. And I, I think it's fun. You know, it's fun, you know, being there for some of the young guys and talking and, you know, telling stories of the good and the bad that I've been through and so they don't make those same mistakes and just trying to be the best mentor or big brother that you can possibly be. And and own it. I mean, he's got a lot of upside to him. Um, he's a lot stronger than what you you think. Um, but that kid has a bright future. He's learning. Um, I think the biggest thing I take from him is the willingness to to listen and 
articulate it and go out and try to do it and not just be a like I, I got it type guy like I can do it like he's always asking questions always trying to learn um, and anytime you got like especially a rookie that's willing to do those things um, he's going to be with us for a long time Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, like I was here on the upside of Paul, um, you know, I don't know if Paul would have became Paul if Danny didn't get hurt. So him having that opportunity when Danny went down to kind of spread his wings and you see Paul take off in the next year when he came back and he had that, that all-star year, it's kind of similar to like you know, what Ty is going through, being able to put this organization on your back and being the, the face of this, this basketball club, uh, the face of the city in, in retrospect, but, um, and, and, and take it in full stride and, and run with it and want that pressure. Um, I think that's what I love about him the most. He, he wants it. Um, he's a Midwest type of guy and he loves being here. He loves this city and he embraces it. And, I have nothing but respect for him.